What is going on everybody? It is Aaron Cates and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm doing something I literally have not seen on YouTube before. I looked and looked and looked and looked and the closest video I could see, the guy did a terrible job and it wasn't even quite the same because he had a machine help him in the beginning. We're going to be mounting the 37s on the 22x14s by hand. I'm at least going to try to. The whole reason I'm, I'm doing this is because I don't trust any shops around here. I've taken wheels and tires to shops before to have them mounted around here. And I go pick them up and my rims are scratched and everything. And I don't want to take that risk. I just spent all that time painting these wheels and making them nice. I don't want to take the risk of taking it to a shop and them scratching it. And then shops around here charge an arm and a leg to do anything on a big wheel. Um, last time I got quoted for the Chevy, which is back over here, you guys know it, it has 22 by 14s and 37s as well. Last quote I got just to balance them was over $200 just to balance them. That doesn't even include mounting tires. So if I were to take these to have them mounted and balanced, I'm looking at like $300 and I'm not paying that at a shop when I can try and do it myself. So this morning what I throw get, I throw get some valve stems for all the rims because they don't have valve stems in them. And I have to go to Harbor Freight and get this tire. Uh, it's kind of like a pry bar, but it's meant for mounting tires on rims. I have to get one of those. It's like six bucks at Harbor Freight. Um, I mounted all of the tire, the rollers on the Ford. I mounted those with pry bars, but I mean, I don't care about those rims. Those rims get scratched, who cares? These, I don't, I don't want to scratch these. So I'm actually going to be mounting the tire from the back side. We're going to have the face of the wheel down. That way we don't have to touch anything on the face. Everything is just going to be on the back side. If I scratch the back of the wheel, I'm not going to be insanely happy. But at the same time, I'm not really going to be upset about it because it's the back of the wheel. Everyone mistreats the backs of their wheels. So I'm not really worried about it. You guys know my end goal with these is to sell them. So I got to get these 37s on, which are out here. We're gonna get these 37s mounted back on, and then hopefully, if I still have time today, if that doesn't take all of my time, we're gonna get the shocks mounted on the Ford, and we're gonna test drive it. Uh, <laughs> I haven't driven it since we did the 15 inch lift up front, and I'm, I'm very excited. So if we can get the shocks mounted on, get those tires mounted, we're gonna test drive it today and hopefully everything goes well. So I'm gonna stop talking. I have to run to Harbor Freight and I have to run to AutoZone. Then I'll be back and we can start mounting these tires. Okay, so after two trips to AutoZone and a trip to Harbor Freight, everything has worked out now. Uh, I went to Harbor Freight first as I was like, you know, they sell stuff for tires and I think they should st sell uh, like valve stems. Nope, didn't sell them. So I had to go to AutoZone. I got some brake cleaner and some valve stems. Got the wrong valve stems, had to go back and get different ones. Uh, just a little heads up if you guys are doing this. I don't know if these wheels use high pressure valve stems or not, but the only high pressure stems that AutoZone had was the ones that have a bolt or like a nut on them. And I didn't want to do that because they look terrible. So I got low pressure stems and I'll tell you so far one of them's working. Uh, I haven't tried the other three, but one of them is working. I already got one tire mounted and it took me like 10 minutes. It was super, super simple. I got a little scratch on the wheel where I dropped the, the uh, tire iron at first and not very happy about it, but it's not that noticeable. But let me show you how freaking good these wheels look. They look insane. So this right here is where I scratched the wheel. I dropped the tire iron and it hit right here. And then I dropped drop my little air air chuck and it hit right here and right here. So I need to be more careful next go around, but these are wheels, they are gonna get scratched. The, the biggest thing I'm happy about is how good they look on the tires. And even better, we didn't scratch the front of the wheels at all. I mounted from the back, like I told you guys, and a couple little scratches, I think right here. Uh, one right here. And I think that's all. So didn't really scratch much of anything. And while I was at it, I got this tire mounted on the roller. So once I have to put this on the trailer, I can put all the rollers on because it won't fit on the trailer with the 22 by 14s. So I had to have four rollers. I've got four of them now. And I've officially blown a tire on with brake cleaner. And you guys are gonna have to see that in a second. You guys have probably all seen the, uh, 
tire shop videos of them stretching a tire onto a rim. Well, these are 1350 tires on a 14 wide rim. So they are stretched. It's not like a 1250 on a 14 wide, but they are definitely stretched. So I did have to blow the tire onto the rim. Honestly, it's not that hard at all. It's a little hectic when it happens when you're by yourself. If you're with two people, it's a little bit easier. The reason why it's so hectic is because my air chuck, it doesn't have a like stop thing in it. So when it's connected to the air hose, it's just straight air and it will empty my tank very fast. So I have to have it disconnected. So then I'm trying to connect it to the hose before the tire pops off the bead. Just a little hectic, but now I'm gonna show you guys how I mount the valve stem on the rim and then get the tire on. It's honestly very simple. I did this one, first one I ever did, did it in under 10 minutes. So super simple throw you guys up on time lapse and let's get after it okay so first of course you want to get your rim and then you want to get your valve stem and then what you want to do is get some type of either grease oil some type of lubricant could be dish soap like I'm using put a little tiny dab on your valve stem wipe it all the way around where that little rubber gasket is and then pop it through the hole I've got this little tool right here that's got a valve core remover. That's got a thing that screws onto the valve stem to help you pull it through. Once you have it screwed on, you literally just pull and you guys can watch it. Just like that, it's in there. Now we can get our tire on. Okay, now what you wanna do is make sure there's nothing on the inside of your tire, no leaves, not a lot of dirt, not a lot of water, anything like that. Then you wanna check the sidewall of your tire. You wanna check and make sure this isn't directional or if the if it has an outside or an inside side of the tire. Because a lot of times they'll have an outside and an inside. It's more common on car tires than truck tires, but a lot of truck tires are di uh, directional. These tires are not, but tires like RBP and uh, I believe the Road One Anthems or something like that, they are di directional. If they have an arrow going forward, that's it. That's the way the tire needs to go. So you gotta make sure you put it on the rim that specific way. These tires are not that way, but just check your tires before you go mounting them on because you're gonna be really upset if you get them all put all the way on and your tires are backwards. So check your tire, make sure the inside of it's clean, and then we can get to mounting it. Now, once you're sure that your tire is clean, it's not directional, anything like that, you wanna get some water and dish soap. Um, you can use other things, but this is the most common. This is what a lot of tire shops use. This is a lubricant to help you get the tire on the rim. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray the whole inside of the bead of the tire. Just go around and absolutely soak it in this dish soap and water, because this is gonna be your lubricant. This is what's gonna help you get this tire on even better. So once you have it all soaked up, you're gonna pick up the tire and basically drop it on your rim. And then you're gonna use your weight to an advantage. Me, I'm six foot six and I'm 240 pounds, so I've got a lot of weight to use for my advantage. But you wanna work the tire on like this. It's gonna be a little time consuming, it's gonna be a little frustrating, but it's gonna be worth it because the more you fight with it like this, the less you have to use your tire iron and risk, risk scratching your wheel. So just fight with it back and forth until you can get it as close as possible and then use your tire iron. You might have to use the tire iron to get you through some little tough spots, but for the most part, just work it on there. Just like that. So I never even had to use the tire iron. Just used my weight to my advantage, kept it moving. This is where the soapy water comes in handy because the more lubricated it is, the less work you have to do. So then we're gonna lubricate this side as well and kind of repeat the same process. But this process, you're probably gonna have to use the tire iron. You might be able to get it on if you're doing like a 40 inch tire on a 15 inch rim or like 44 and you've got a lot of sidewall you can flex with. But any lower profile tire, most likely not. This does have quite a bit of sidewall, but like a car tire, you're probably not gonna be able to do this with. All right, now same thing again. Just use your weight to your advantage and work it on there. Just like that. So now we have the tire on the rim. This is where it gets fun. So you wanna make sure that you have your air hose ready, your air chuck ready, and get ready to uh, connect the two because this is where you need to work fast. 
I don't recommend doing this if you're under 18. It looks insane. Have parental supervision. If you're an adult, have someone with you. I am a redneck trained professional. I don't know how else to put this, but don't sue me, do this on your own terms. I'm gonna fill the inside of the tire. Recording time was 13 minutes. So that's with me showing you guys how to do this and everything. It took me 13 minutes to get that tire on. Super easy. And you don't have to have a special tire iron. You don't have to have any special tools really. You need an air compressor, a air hose, air attachment, something to put air in the tire with, brake cleaner, some type of flammable source to stretch the tire onto the rim. And you could use a screwdriver, you could use a pry bar. You could use anything that is sturdy enough to move the tire on. You guys saw I got the tire onto the rim the first time without even touching the tire iron. I used the tire on the second time just to help speed up my process a little bit, but didn't scratch this wheel at all. And it's on there. I mean, we've got, we've got two. They are not balanced. I will have to have a shop professionally balance these, but I'm not going to do that for a little while because I'm going to wait till after I move. Hopefully we can find a new shop in Georgia that doesn't charge an arm and a leg to balance tires and be all be all situated then. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to mount these other two and then we can get them on the truck. I have to go get some gas for this because it is out of gas and then uh, we'll be able to test drive and finally get some pictures of this thing squatted on the road and not in the driveway so I can finally lift the rear. Shit. Oh, but y'all found that funny. <laughs> Just like that, the tires are mounted on the rims. This is the only one that fought me a lot. Um, fought me going on the rim and fought me beating. Uh, it's the only one that when I lit the, the flame, the brake cleaner, that didn't blow up on the rim the first time. I had to do two times on that. Caught the blanket on fire. Almost singed the hairs on my face. But we got all of them on. This is the only one I, I did not have to use the tire iron at all to mount this one. It went on completely by itself. Now, I wanna say to you guys, what other YouTubers do you see hand mounting their 22 by 14s and 37s hand mounting any of their tires for that matter you don't see it so if, if you guys like seeing content where i teach you guys how to do things and i do everything truly myself hit that subscribe button so now we're going to get these put on the truck i throw some gas and then uh we're going to test drive it it looks so good now besides the fact that it looks like it skipped leg day these are 37s but i mean it absolutely skates them it looks so good. I mean, even I even kind of dig the squat. Like, it honestly doesn't look that terrible. I mean, it is quite a bit of squat, but it doesn't look that bad. Oh, it looks so good with these on it. Now that we are finally uh, finished with this whole wheel ordeal, I can tell you guys the route I wanted to go with these originally. You guys know if you've been following this for even the last month, I wanted to have these powder coated. I had a friend that had built a powder coating oven. We were gonna do it at his house and everything, but things didn't work out. I wasn't allowed to film there. And that was really the whole reason I wanted to do it. Um, I was gonna do like a, a rainbow bass boat uh, with the wheels. It was gonna be like a black base and then like rainbow, almost like flake, but it wasn't flake. It was gonna be psychedelic. So when you looked at it, it's gonna go through all the colors of the rainbow and it was gonna be super sparkly like a bass boat. That was what I was gonna do with the wheels. But it didn't work out, so this was the next best thing. And I can honestly say I am really, really freaking happy. Uh, I didn't do it on camera, but a couple weeks ago, I got the steering 
back from a family friend who extended them for me. Um, the track bar is a little too long and I've got it bottomed out. So you know what that means? We're gonna have to lift this a little bit more because it's not exactly even underneath there. Uh, this side sticks out just a little bit further than this side just because that track bar is pushed over that way about half an inch so we need to lift it at least another inch so we can center this axle some but you don't see me complaining about that it's officially on its own weight nothing underneath of it it's running it is ready for a test drive now i must say I threw some stuff away and I was walking back from the trash can and looking at it at this angle. Oh my God, it looks sick. Oh, it looks so good. It's time to take it for its first drive since it got the 15 inch lift. First drive on the setup. I gotta make sure the brakes still work first, I guess, because I mean, I haven't driven this thing in months. All right, brakes still work. All right, guys, this is the best I can do for now. I wanna focus on driving it. Oh, I'm so happy this thing's out of the driveway, guys. You have no idea. Oh, it looks so good. Look at it. Oh my God. Oh, it looks killer. It looks so good. It sounds good. It looks good. Now we just gotta get rid of this squat. But honestly, I might keep it for a little bit because it's gonna get attention this year. Oh my gosh, it looks good. Oh, it looks so good. Honestly, <laughs> I'm running about 30, 35 right now on unbalanced tires, no shocks. Rides pretty good, like I'm not even gonna lie. It does not ride that bad. This thing is huge. Like this thing is absolutely huge. I wish I wasn't recording on my phone, but Camera's dead and I didn't feel like going back to the house. God, it looks so good. Officially made it out the driveway. Took like three months, but we got it done. And that's, that's all that really matters. Oh my gosh. It looks insane. I'm so proud of this truck, just because I built everything that's on it. Everything that is done right now, I have done myself, no one else has touched. I welded the exhaust, I installed the headers, I solid axle swapped it, I built the radius arm drop bracket. I mounted the freaking tires on these rims today, like, guys, hit that like button. This is awesome. Okay, well I just got back from probably the longest drive I've taken it on since I brought it to this house. Normally I just drive around my neighborhood. This time I went down the road a little bit and I went down another side road that has like four houses on it and it's a dead end. Uh, I try and stay off any busy roads with this because it is not tagged and it is not insured. So I wanna make sure. What the hell was that? Whatever that noise was, it just came from the woods over here. Something just got attacked by something. Okay, well, uh, like I was saying, I try and stay off uh, any busy roads or any roads with any amount of traffic. I try and only go down roads that have like three or four cars like every 10 minutes. So, just test drove it. Honestly, for these tires not being balanced, 
and this not having shocks on it i got up to like 45 miles an hour and i couldn't tell i'm sure around 50 to 60 you'd probably be able to tell a little bit more but 30 to 40 you couldn't really tell and the back tires are pretty chopped so i'm, I'm hoping to smooth them out some uh sadly these tires can't stay on uh much longer i have to put the stocks back on to get it onto a trailer and then when it's gonna be sitting in the driveway up at our new house in georgia probably have to have the stocks on it because it's a it's a narrow driveway and these 14 wides it's going to be a pain to have it in the driveway with these so those will probably go back on so i want to thank you guys for watching if you like the way the tires and rims turned out hit that like button because i love it um what the hell uh oh Damn, fucking wildlife out here. So, little side note, guys, I got attacked by a raccoon out here uh, about a year and a half ago. So, anytime like I see animals out here, I automatically freak out because it had rabies when it attacked me. It went all the way up my leg up to my waist and attacked me. So, fox just scared the living shit out of me. So, I'm gonna hurry up and close out this video because I ain't got my gun on me and uh, get inside. So, thank you guys for watching. If you like the way they turned out, hit that like button. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for the next videos, guys, because we got more content coming now that this thing's back on the road. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.